Good morning, everybody. Wow, that was so weak. Come on, you guys can do better than that. Good morning. There we go. I want to invite you guys to stand and let's sing together. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. See so you call. Every single breath I'll bring you 
search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my It's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'll bring you more than a song, I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you my heart. Let's sing that again. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you my heart, Jesus. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you Amen. I'd like to invite you to turn around as we begin our service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew that all authority in heaven and earth has been given me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then we read in the scriptures that in the last chapter of Mark, whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. And to that, the Apostle Peter writes, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sins of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And how is this young lady to be named? Cora Rose Ingrid. Cora Rose Ingrid. Receive the sign of the Holy Cross on your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved both believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Cora Rose Imgrund according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through this saving flood all sin in her which has been inherited from Adam and which she has committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope so that with all believers in your promises, she would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From very ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing godparents or sponsors or witnesses for each of these children. 
And at this moment, we're going to ask them to make a commitment. It is our expectation that you will pray for this young day, lady every day, that you will keep her in mind of her baptism, and as much as in you lies, you give your counsel and aid, God forbid, that they sh she should lose her parents. That she be brought up in the true knowledge and worship of God, be taught things like the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, and the Apostles' Creed. And that as she grows in years, you place into her hands the Holy Scriptures. You bring her into the services of God's house. You provide for further instruction in Christian faith so that she can grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ. If this you in intend gladly and willingly to do, answer yes. God enable, to, enable you to will and do this faithful and loving work, and by his grace, fulfill what we're not able to do. Amen. Hear the holy gospel according to Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them. For... Of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I'm going to invite you to reach out toward Korah and join me as we pray together the prayer our Lord taught. Together. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Cora Rose, the Lord bless your coming in, and your going out from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Yeah, we can head on out. We can head up here. We'd like to welcome all of you to worship today. For those of you that are watching online, I'm sorry you probably didn't see the first portion of that. But uh, we are in the midst of celebrating a miracle in the making, and that is Cora's baptism. And there will be more later in the service. A couple of announcements and our prayer requests for today that I'd like to share with you. The first announcement is that for the last couple of weeks, we have had in the gathering space what we are calling a giving tree. And it's over on my left, your right as you're in the gathering space, you'll see a big tree with a little guy at the bottom of the, the trunk, and on it a whole bunch of apples. Uh, the apples have come and gone now twice, and this is the third set of apples. You know, crops are coming fast and furious for us. These apples are invitations for you to arrange a time when the new assistant pastor, Sean, and his wife, Molly, can come over to your house. There's no date, there's no time attached to it, there's just an invitation that you grab, and then you arrange whatever works for you. Now, for some of you, having people over at your house to eat uh, is not going to happen. My guess is that the new assistant pastor and his wife would entertain a night out with you somewhere as well if you'd rather do that, up to you, as opposed to having them in. But there are about a dozen apples left. When they're gone, they're gone. But we would like you to intentionally take an apple and arrange a time for the new pastor and his wife to come to your house and make a personal connection with your family. So if you would, after the service, grab an apple, figure out a date that will work for you and work with them. Uh, the bakers will not be in town until, I think, the 15th of June. So it's not something you have to decide right away. And they will not actually be in office and working until the 6th of July. So even after that date, you could come up with an evening or an opportunity to get together. Uh, I hope you will do that because it is very difficult, speaking from experience, to get to know you well if we don't spend any time with you. So help us do that. Help Sean and Molly do that by grabbing an apple and making a commitment uh, to spend and invest an evening with them, if you will. 
The prayers that we have are for those who are today celebrating their baptismal birthdays, and you'll see a list there. We're also praying for Cora, who is being brought into the family of our Father through the waters of baptism today, for the kindergarten kids' graduation this week, and for uh, the calling of a DCE, a Director of Christian Education. The call committee has been identified and will assemble on Tuesday. So this is that point in time when if you know someone who is a director of Christian education that you think would be a great fit to this congregation, that you submit their names to us so that we can begin the review process and the interview process. So we'll be doing that in earnest now for the next several weeks. So if you know someone you'd like to nominate, this is the time for us to hear those names as we consider them. A director of Christian education, for those of you that are new to that term, is uh, in our denomination generally a youth worker, uh, specifically working with, with child or, ministry, or youth ministry in a congregation, and uh, who has been trained to that specific task at one of our universities, uh, and uh, who is possibly open to receiving a call to Johnson County and to Overland Park. So if uh, you need more information, uh, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to provide it for you, but we're looking for nominations now. We want to pray for those who are struggling with their health, and you see a list of those that we've identified. And then for those that are expecting children and anticipating the birth of babies, we pray for them. If you have other prayer requests, uh, now for the third week, we have prayer cards in the pew right in front of you. So if you can find that card that's right in front of you, it has two sides. One side is for you to record your attendance here today, so we do need you to fill it out. Because if you don't fill it out, Lynn in the front office will not like you really well. Uh, you will be our best friend if you fill it out. And then the back side of it is any prayer requests you have. And rather than passing it down the aisle or putting it in someone else's hands, would you put it in the collection plate at the end of the service? There are collection plates immediately behind you or to the west side of the sanctuary. Just drop it in there and we'll take care of it right away. Those are our prayer requests. Those are our announcements. Please rise as we continue our service together. You know, as we come together in worship, this is the one place that we have in our lives where we can safely and freely admit that I'm not okay, that the world is not okay, that I am broken, that I have fallen short, I have failed. And so I want to invite you to join me now in a moment as we confess our sins in the presence of the living God, the God who calls us and invites us to repent, to turn away from our sins and to turn back towards him to receive his gracious forgiveness. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you that you are, you are good and gracious. That as we come to you today and as we admit that we're not okay and that we have failed and that we have fallen short of your expectations of who we are to be as people, that, that we can freely admit those things and the confidence knowing that you, you love us so desperately and so deeply that you would send your son, Jesus Christ, to live and suffer and die and to be raised from the dead for us. And Lord, it, it is true. It's funny. We pray in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but so many times our lives are lived in a way that, that the prayer is really, let me have what I want. Let me live the way that I want. And many times that leads us down paths of regret and guilt and shame and brokenness and baggage. And so, Lord, we come to you today and we admit that we have not lived in line with your will for us. We have failed you. We failed ourselves and the people around us. We have been unable to love you and serve you with our whole heart. And we haven't been able to love and serve the people around us to the extent that we are called to. Lord, we ask that you would have mercy on us, that you would forgive us, and that, that as we come to you right now in a moment of silent prayer, you would forgive us for all these sins that are weighing on us today as well.
Lord, you are our great deliverer. You are our hope. You are our rescue. You see us. You see us to the very core of our being. You see how broken we are, and you don't blink an eye. Instead, when we confess our sins to you, we have the assurance of your love and your goodness and your mercy and your forgiveness. And so once again, Lord, today we ask you, Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Wash us. Cleanse us. Make us new. Not because we've earned it, not because we deserve it, not because we're good enough or because we try hard enough, but simply of the amazing sacrificial love of Jesus Christ for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, I got great news for you. We have a God who is good and gracious and merciful. And therefore, we can receive together this day the forgiveness of all of our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you guys to sing. Water, you turn into, the wine, into wine. You open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Our scripture reading today comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 15. 
We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his Son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything, anything, according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of Him. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to be seated. We pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and may the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Pinocchio. We probably all grew up on Disney's version of that story. Last night I was watching TV and stumbled across a movie called Artificial Intelligence. I think it's a Spielberg movie about the creation of a lifelike little electronic mechanical boy and his dream of being real. It's Spielberg's version of Pinocchio. The story about a wooden boy who dreamed of being real and how along life's journey he was confronted with a lot of different people and many testimonies and in the process steered in many wrong directions which led him to telling lies and lengthening, as we know the story, his nose. No kill. Last year there was a movie released entitled Pinocchio by an Italian movie maker that none of us have seen. Because a year ago, none of us were going to movies. And I don't believe it's been yet released for us to see it. But some of the artistic imagery I thought was fairly profound, and so you'll see me borrowing some of those pictures that none of us have otherwise seen about the remake of the story of the boy that wanted so desperately to be real. We rely on the testimonies of so many people, and we do testify on a regular basis. Maybe so many times we're not even aware we're doing it. Someone comes up to you and says, my vehicle is broken down. Where do you recommend I take it? You testify. Sometimes you will testify, don't go there, but go here. But you testify. Where is a good place in town to eat? You testify. Oh, by the way, down Metcalf and 119th, a brand new restaurant has opened up called Hook and reel, I think. It's Cajun food. I pulled up the menu online. Scared me to death. No prices. No prices. Have any of you been to Hook or Reel yet? No one at the other two services either. Go and let me know how it was. I would love to hear your testimony before I take out a loan and try it, okay? When you move into town, you've got to establish a relationship with doctors and dentists, and haven't you asked for the testimony of people around you? You need a medical procedure, and you want someone who is credible, don't you ask, and don't you listen carefully to the testimony? Sure we do. 
movies that we're going to go see, a need to upgrade our internet provider, we ask, and people do testify. They testify to the classes that we should take. You go to college, you better believe there are people testifying. And they will tell you, this is the most incredible professor. You want to take that class. And then they will say, whatever you do, avoid this guy or this gal. We testify and we listen to those testimonies, to the teachers, to the authors, to the novels we read. We rely so much on the testimony of others in our life. I underlined for you how often the word was used in the very few passages that we're focusing on today, and I bet you didn't count them as we went along, did you? John uses the word God seven times. He uses the word son or son of God six times. Show of hands. How often did the word testify or testimonial appear in a text that Vicar just read? How many of you say four times? Wrong. Five times. Everybody's chickening out now. Six times. Wrong. Seven times. Wrong. Eight times. It appears in the text eight times. It must then be a very significant word if he uses it even more than he uses the name of our Father and his Son. Testimonies are so important to God that he carved out a commandment to address how we manage them in our life. I believe I have been instructed and instruct that it's the Eighth Commandment. And I believe it starts out like this. Thou shalt not bear false witnesses against your neighbor. It's all about testimonies. Important enough to God that he would direct what is in his good and perfect will regarding them in our lives. Because there is power in testimonies. They shape and form our reality day in and day out. And they inform our faith, our convictions in life. There is power in testimony. And Paul or John begins in our text for today with a simple fact. We accept people's testimony. We do. Unless we have a reason to question or dismiss their testimony, we just accept it for what it is. Whether it's regarding movies or restaurants Or doctors and dentists, we just accept those testimonies. And in comparison, John says, God testifies. And God's testimony is greater. And he justifies that statement saying, because it's him, he's God. And partly because man's testimonies always seem to fall short of God's glory. Whether we intend to exaggerate or we simply don't have all the facts or we do intend to mislead, God's testimony is always going to be greater than our testimony or the testimony of people around us because ours always seems to fall short, Paul writes in Romans. But God's testimony is always focused and very, very specific. God's testimony is about his son. All of Scripture is God's testimony about His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, about the name that is above every other name, and that at the sound of that name, every knee would bow and every tongue confess. It's the name that His Son used to protect the apostles. It is the name that we confess as Christians, and it is God's testimony that He give evidence to his love through his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And John says, anyone who believes the Son of God, and I hope I'm talking about you today, anyone who believes the Son of God has that testimony right here in your heart. It's not a cognitive, intellectual exercise any more than it is a very heartfelt, very personal experience. And anyone who confesses Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior can't do simply as an academic expression. 
It comes from here. Because that's where God places the testimony in our hearts. There are three who testify to the truth of God. The three that are mentioned in John's little letter are the Spirit, the water, and the blood. This is one of the most difficult passages in all of Scripture. Because theologians and commentators on this section of the Bible can't agree on what those three are. That's not to say they don't agree on the first one. That's sort of obvious. The Spirit is the Spirit. But where there is some measure of disagreement is, what does John mean by water and by blood being witnesses? Let's start with Spirit. That's the easier one. The Holy Spirit. That Spirit testifies. In fact, as we train and teach our youth in catechetical truths, we say of the Holy Spirit that it is His responsibility to call, gather, enlighten, and sanctify. If I took all those words and lumped them into one, it's His power and His position to testify. He testifies to God's testimony, which is Jesus Christ. And that's why the Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth. He is the indwelling witness of the power of the gospel for us and for our salvation. And that's what makes baptism so important and why Korah is going to be so blessed in a minute. Because God is going to place his testimony by the power of the Holy Spirit in her heart. The spirit of truth. And the confession that Jesus Christ is her Lord and Savior as he is ours. The Spirit testifies. And without the Spirit, it is, according to Scripture, impossible to accept the things of God because they are all spiritually discerned. They're just foolishness otherwise. But if the Spirit is in our heart, the testimony is clear, and the understanding is irrefutable. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Spirit testifies. But so does the water. And it's the water and the blood that commentators and theologians over the generations have struggled with. Martin Luther and John Calvin agreed on this particular point, and they believe that water and blood are the sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper. But as I read more and more commentators and theologians, I really believe that the initial testimony, God's testimony in water, has to be on the banks of the Jordan River. It has to be that moment where Jesus coming up out of the water, hears the voice, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, listen to him. God testifies, this is my son. Those waters testify to God's love for us in Jesus Christ. And those waters continue to testify to the importance and the power of Jesus Christ connected to God's love for us in the cross. The baptismal waters of today remain a part of that essential testimony of the Spirit. And in that testimony, there is washing. There is rebirth. There is renewal. The Spirit testifies. The water testifies. And every time we touch water, it testifies, Luther says, to the love of God in our lives. And when I was preaching this at the earlier service, man, it broke loose outside. And I turned around and went, amen. For every time we hear water, every time we touch water, every time we are connected to water, we are reminded of the testimony that in water, God has redeemed us. He sanctified us. He has caused a rebirth to occur within us. He's deposited the Spirit within us, and He is testifying to us that we are His and that He loves us. The Spirit testifies to that. Baptism testifies to that, and so does the blood. The third witness, the blood. There are commentators that say, well, it's water and blood together, and it was that moment when the spear was thrust into Jesus' side. And when all those liquids come pouring out, that was a testimony of God to the world. No, I don't think so. I believe the moment that they 
jammed that cross, the crown of thorns on his head and flogged his back. The testimony came bubbling forth. And from the cross of Calvary, it ultimately spoke the words of grace and mercy to us. The cross ultimately testifies to the love of God for us in Jesus Christ. And every time a Christian sees a cross, little or large, it testifies to God's love. And by the power of the Spirit, it reminds us that we are chosen people, redeemed, purchased, and won. And by the power of the Spirit, the blood continues to testify, and it will today. By the power of the Holy Spirit, that blood that is in, with, and under the bread and wine, that blood testifies today as we eat and drink that we are forgiven, that we are his chosen, that we are redeemed, that God loved us so much to send his son to die on the cross for our sin. It reminds us that it was all spilled out on the cross for us and for our salvation. The Spirit testifies. The water testifies. The blood testifies, and they all agree The testimony remains unaltered, unchanged for generations. That God's love for us is secure in his only son, Jesus. And God testifies for one reason. So that you might know that you have eternal life. Notice that it doesn't say that you might hope for eternal life. But that you might know right here. And right now, that you have eternal life. That is the testimony of the Spirit. Of the waters of your baptism. And of the sacrament of the altar. You have eternal life. And that knowledge gives each of us confidence to approach the throne of grace. And to unload what is on our hearts. John says, it gives us permission. The three witnesses, the spirit, the water, and the blood, they give us permission to ask of our Father anything according to his will. Anything. The spirit says, ask. And he intercedes on our behalf with groans that words cannot express, the scripture says. He jumps in there along with us. The waters encourage us to ask Because our sins have been washed away and we have now right to enter into the Holy of Holies, the very presence of God, and ask. And the blood that washes away our sins and robes us in righteousness and redeems us says, ask, ask anything in his name. To reject those testimonies, John writes, is to make God to be out a liar. That he was lying when he said he loved us. That he was lying when he sent his son, that he was lying when his son bore the weight of the world's sin and ours as well, and that he was lying about his resurrection and his ascension. To reject the testimony of the Spirit, the water, and the blood is to say, God, you lied, and it is the only sin I find in Scripture that there isn't enough grace to cover. To reject the testimony of the Spirit. To turn your back on the Lord who loves you is to make him out to be a big fat liar, John says. And if you reject these testimonies, and I pray you don't, but if you reject this testimony, according to John, what you are admitting to is that you have no life within you. Because only if you have the Son, and only if you have the testimony of the Father, do you have life within you. So to reject these testimonies is to make an admission of where you are in relationship with life and life for all of eternity. You see, faith according to Scripture, or life according to Scripture, comes by faith. And faith, according to Scripture, comes by testimony in the book of Romans. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It comes by testimony. The testimony of three. The testimony of the Spirit, of the water, and of the blood. 
I'd like to take a moment and share with you my testimony and invite you to share yours. My testimony is that I have the gift of life everlasting. As Vicar said, not because I've earned it and not because of my own efforts, but because of what Jesus did for me on the cross of Calvary. He has forgiven me. He has purchased and won me. He has provided a place for me in paradise. And all of this out of his incredible kindness and love and compassion, I have in Jesus eternal life. John put it like this. God has given us eternal life in his son. I'm going to ask you to alter these words just a bit, and I'm going to ask you to make a good confession here. I'm going to ask you to, if that is truly on your heart, that you say, God has given me eternal life in his son. And I would pray that becomes a part of your testimony. The testimony that the Spirit invites you to offer the world around you. A testimony that is couched very keenly in the water and the blood as well. If God has imprinted that testimony on your heart, then I would invite you right now to make that confession. And the confession is just changing a word. And in the context of 1 John, we confess, God has given me eternal life in his son. And all God's people said, praise the Lord, amen. And may the peace that passes all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in faith until life everlasting. Amen. We continue our service now with our gifts and our offerings. And though we don't pass any plates right now at Bethany, we do include this in our service because we believe that our offerings are an act of worship. And so here at Bethany, we have a few different ways to give online through text messages. Uh, we have plates set up in our gathering space, or you can mail them into our church office. And, then, and we also want to encourage you, again, we have these connection cards set up in our pews. Uh, we want to encourage you to fill that out. Let us know you are here. And on the back side, if you have any prayer requests, please fill that out and know that we will be praying for you throughout the week. We continue now with our offerings and a time of reflection.
when I've come to end this race I've run and I receive the prize that Christ has won I will be with you in paradise I will be with you in paradise cause I believe everything that you say you are I believe and I have seen your unchanging heart in the good things and in the hardest part I believe and I will follow you I believe and I will follow you yes I believe everything that you say you are I believe and I have seen your unchanging heart in the good things and in the hardest part I believe and I will follow you I believe and I will follow you Cora Rose we have six questions to ask, and I'll ask the first. Uh, Vicar will ask, as well as the elder, uh, several of these questions. So the first question is, do you renounce the devil? And the response is going to be, yes, I renounce him. And I'm going to ask the congregation to join her in this. So here's the question. Cora Rose Imgrid, do you renounce the devil? Yes, yes I, I renounce them. them. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, yes, I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce all of his ways? Yes, yes I, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, yes I, believe. I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, yes I, believe. I believe. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? If so, answer, yes, I do. Yes, I do. And do you wish, Cora, to be baptized into the Christian faith? If answer, yes. Yes. Cora Rose Ingrid. I baptize you in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you're saying, once was okay, but twice. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on you. May he strengthen you with his grace until life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which shall have no end. For his holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and heir of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gift, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. <laughs> Please rise as we pray. Yeah, you can blow that out. Yeah. Yeah. 
Almighty, most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family, and you've granted Cora a new birth and holy baptism, made her a member of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and heir of your heavenly kingdom. We implore you of that of your mercy that she may grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ, and finally, with all of your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Cora. Peace be with you. Amen. We continue our service now by going to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. The kingdom of God has broken in once again. We thank you for the gift of baptism in the waters today that you have claimed, Korah, as your own child. And we thank you for that gift of baptism that we also receive, and, and especially today for those who are celebrating their baptismal birthdays throughout this month. That you'd help us to grasp that new identity that we have in you, and your love and your forgiveness, and that renewal that we have. That we would rest in your goodness and your mercy each and every day. And that we would be confident that we can come to you that we can know you and have a relationship with you and that we can proclaim, that we can testify to your goodness to those around us. Father, we also thank you this day for, for the, the wonders of the ministry that we have here at Bethany and the opportunity through our preschool, Mother's Day out, through our day school, to impact the lives of children, their families, generations those students who on Friday night celebrated their 8th grade graduation, bless them in this next season of life for them. For those kindergartners who are celebrating their graduation this week, we ask that you would be with them, that you would bless them and their families. And we thank you for these ministries that we share here at Bethany. We thank you for the season of new beginnings and transitions here in life and ministry at Bethany. We we ask that you would be with the, the call process for a new director of Christian education that you would grant your guidance and wisdom and blessing to those who are part of that, that, that we as a church, and, and in particular those people who are in that process, that they would be blessed through that experience and that you would watch over them in this journey. And Lord, we ask also that you would watch over Sean and Molly as they begin to prepare for their transition and their, their new life here at Bethany and for his ministry as assistant pastor here. We ask that you would bless them in the season ahead and that you would watch over them as they prepare to enter into ministry here. And Father, we thank you that we can come to you in times of celebration, but there's also times of challenges and heartache as well. And so we ask that you would be with all those who are in need of help and healing and strength at this time. Especially we lift up before you Marianne, Bill, John, Dalen, Morris, Brad, Doug, and Judith. We ask that you would watch over them and their families, that you would be with them in their time of need, that you would provide the proper care and treatment through doctors, nurses, and medical professionals, that you would be with them and their loved ones in all of their needs. And Father, we ask also that you would be with those who are expecting and preparing and awaiting the birth of children. We thank you for the gift of life, and we ask that you would be with Hoyt and Kylie, with Emily and Garth, and that you would prepare them for, for not only the wonders of birth, but then after that, the new birth that comes in the waters of baptism. And Father, we ask that you be with all of those around us. In each of our lives, there are people and situations and circumstances that are weighing on us. And, and even as we're in this time of prayer, our hearts and our minds may be elsewhere, thinking about those people and those things. We ask that you be with us and be with all those that are on our hearts as well. And, that you would be with us and strengthen us and provide for us each day. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and in the power of your Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. On the night that Christ was betrayed, he gathered his disciples together in an upper room to celebrate Passover. And in the sacrament of Passover, he took bread, unleavened bread, and he broke it, giving thanks to his Father in heaven, and he said, take and eat. This is my body. It's given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he 
again said, drink of it, all of you. This is a cup in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Drink of this often in remembrance of me. The spirit testifies. The water testifies. The blood testifies. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Please be seated as I commune those who will be assisting.
Please rise. May this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Father, once again you have provided for us. Once again you have strengthened us and renewed us in this holy feast in the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again you have revived us and renewed us with these gifts of forgiveness and life and salvation. As we have received these gifts, let us now go boldly out, courageously, those who testify and proclaim the goodness and the love that you have for us to those around us, that all would come to know, that all would come to proclaim and testify that Jesus Christ is Lord. We thank you for this feast, and we ask that you would bless us now and always. In your holy and amazing name we pray, amen. And as we head out of here today, I invite you to receive this blessing and to carry it with you throughout the week, wherever you go and whatever you do. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. is built 
are nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest flame, but only trust in Jesus' name. Sing it again, my hope. My hope is built. Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest flame, but only trust in Jesus' name. In Christ.